Hey guys, some breaking news here. Apparently, the world's energy needs are going to soar by 2030. I'm so shocked. Who could have seen this coming? However, specifically, we're relating to data center use alone. Check this out. With US data center electricity requirements alone, just the US and just data center, the equivalent of 150 million electric vehicles by 2030, just over half a decade from now. If only there were some companies out there attempting to add some value and address some of the issues around the inevitable energy shortage, such as companies allowing people to store said energy on gigantic batteries. If such a company existed, I'd maybe consider building a valuation model and then trying to understand whether or not it might make sense to invest in such a company. Does anyone know any companies that fit that description? I'd really like to know. This new research note from Morgan Stanley. At first glance, the rapid growth in AI and its impact on electricity demand may not seem to have relevance to Tesla or the broader auto industry. So just to interject, as we've discussed recently, Tesla intends on producing staggering quantities of humanoid robots. Musk gave the example if Tesla long-term is scaled to 100 million humanoid robots per year, that could be a conservative estimate. He believes that maybe a billion a year are being manufactured at scale long-term. And they're going to need to power themselves, all 10 plus billion of those. So to say the world's energy needs are going to surge in the future is a massive understatement. To say they're going to surge... Because of AI, specifically, they're just talking about training AI, never mind the actual use cases of that artificial intelligence in the real world, e.g. autonomous vehicles, humanoid robots, and who knows what else. And while we're discussing AI and humanoid robots and autonomy, I've got a funny feeling that Tesla's energy business will continue to fly completely under the radar. First, everyone's laser focused on vehicles and margins and, oh my god, the demand and hybrids of the future. That narrative, right? Cars, 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 vehicles, 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 margins, margins, margins. What energy business? I suspect with Tesla on the cusp of autonomy, the narrative will eventually shift, possibly quite quickly. So holy shit, they're a transport on demand company, software as a service company. They got a huge install base. They're a money printer. They got software like margins. Autonomy really was that big deal after all. I can were right. And then eventually after autonomy comes the humanoid robots. And I suspect that their energy business is just going to continue to be completely ignored. But do not make this mistake. Again, Humanity is entering an era of hyper abundance. We'll take a few decades to play out, but we're going to need to power that new era. That means a massive increase in energy generation and energy storage and energy supply. Again, if only I knew a company that was addressing all three of these things and had a proven track record, I'd really like to maybe buy one or two of their shares. If anyone knows any companies like that, please, I'm begging you, just let me know in the comments below. Upon closer examination, the implications are potentially highly significant, particularly with respect to the industry's burden to reduce CO2 emissions. Morgan Stanley has published a number of in-depth reports analyzing the topic of powering AI, including a proprietary model that projects the growth of data center power usage, including generative AI, through 2027, both globally and in the US. We wanted to share a few thoughts from the autos and Tesla side of this topic, which will clearly deserve even greater attention and discussion over time. Total projected US data center power usage, that's base data center power plus generative AI power, is projected to reach 337 terawatt hours by 2027. That's around 2.1 times more than estimated US data center power usage in 2023. Now this is a staggering increase over such a short time frame. That's a 20.5% compound annual growth rate in US data center power demand including a 105% compound annual growth rate in generative AI power usage from 2023 through 2027. Extrapolating US data center power demand from 27 to 2030 with just a 10% compound annual growth rate, which honestly may be a massive underestimate, time will tell, would imply just shy of 450 terawatt hours of power usage, which is equivalent to 10.6% of the entire 2022 US power grid. This is not only a big problem, but a gigantic opportunity. It's important to understand, you can't just press a magic button and suddenly generate a fuck ton of additional power to meet this need. US data center power usage may be equivalent to the power used by 150 million electric cars by 2030. I know this is pretty nerdy stuff, but it really matters. It does point to a massive opportunity here. If there's any companies out there that can build gigantic batteries and also develop software to move energy from point A to point B, to pull surplus energy that's being generated during peak times and off peak, anytime there's an opportunity to pull some energy, store it, and provide that energy as needed. Because right now, for those who don't know, almost all electricity is generated on demand. I'm not kidding, by the way. People get home in the middle of summer, turn on their air conditioning, try and cool their apartment, their home, their condo. That surge in demand causes a bunch of peaker plants to fire up to temporarily meet that additional surge in demand for electricity. I'm not kidding. This is how it works today. 
It's crazy when you think about it. it. Would make a hell of a lot more sense to have steady state generation of energy and to store that in batteries and then to deliver that on demand. The problem is the batteries aren't really widely spread yet, although they will be and this is where the opportunity lies. We estimate a typical EV achieves a range efficiency of approximately 4 miles per kilowatt hour by 2030. Most EVs on sale today achieve ranges from the mid threes to over 4 miles of range per kilowatt hour. Assuming a typical annual passenger vehicle miles travel figure of 12,000 miles and 4 miles per kilowatt now implies a typical EV consumes around 3 megawatt hours, which is 3,000 kilowatt hours, annually. Our Cleantech and Global Sustainability Team's forecast of 2027 data center power usage of 337 terawatt hours is equivalent to the usage of 112 million electric vehicles. Extrapolated out to 2030, it's closer to 150 million electric vehicles. Now think about that for a moment. This is just US data center energy usage being equivalent in 2030 to 150 million electric vehicles. The forecasted increase in US data center power from 2023 through 2027 is the electrical energy equivalent to adding 59 million electric vehicles to US roads or a 21% increase in total vehicles. There's currently roughly 280 million vehicles on US roads today. It took the past 16 years for the US car population to add 59 million cars. We note there are less than 6 million Tesla vehicles on the road globally and no more than 4 million Teslas in the United States. At Tesla's current 2024 production rate, which obviously <laughs> isn't going to remain steady, it's going to increase massively, but at their current production rate, it would take nearly 35 years for Tesla to deliver an incremental 59 million units. CO2 emissions, data centers versus cars. While EVs have no tailpipe emissions, there are CO2 emissions associated with EVs from upstream generation, well to wheel. If you want to pause and nerd out on the details, go for it. I'm going to skip over this. You guys get it right. There's energy involved. There's materials. Like We're not living in a Star Trek universe where you just press a button and replicate a new Tesla. Obviously, production, everything involved in that, the whole supply chain requires a lot of energy and there's emissions along the way. The key here, the projected 2027 US data center CO2 emissions are equivalent to the emissions of approximately 14 million gasoline vehicles. Now, AI chips versus cars, a unit comparison of power demand. An Nvidia H100 hopper running at 700 watts and 70% utilization would consume approximately 4.3 megawatt hours of power annually. And that's excluding thermal and other factors. This is a really fascinating piece of info. We calculate the annual electrical energy of one of the H100 chips is equivalent to the power usage of 1.43 Teslas, including the electrical draw for thermal and cooling, which is extremely important for these AI chips, would bring this figure closer to the equivalent of two Teslas in before the climate alarmists start freaking out about AI training. What is the relevance for Tesla and other traditional auto companies? Electric vehicle growth depends on a well-functioning electric grid with relatively affordable electricity prices. By the way, if anyone's curious about how functional or not <laughs> the current electric grid is, especially in the US, there's a great book called The Grid. This on screen now, The Grid, the fraying wires between Americans and our energy future. Fascinating read, highly relevant. Definitely recommend reading this, unless you want to be an extremely ill-informed Tesla investor, in which case don't bother. Truly eye-opening book. Tesla's capability in distributed energy generation, solar, and storage, power wall and megapack, may hold some important cards in the evolution of the US grid as energy usage of compute and data grows. No shit, Sherlock. By the way, this is a big deal. Completely being ignored at this point in time. Tesla's just a car company, automotive margins this quarter. But it's really important. This opportunity within Tesla, hidden in plain sight. People are completely ignoring this. They'll probably regret doing so. Tesla's capability in distributed compute and thermal at the vehicle level may, over time, become an enabling part of the hybrid compute infrastructure to address supply and demand imbalances in physical limitations of the grid. The auto industry is a poster child sector of CO2 emissions and climate change. Progress made within autos to reduce emissions on a gross level may be more than offset by growth in global emissions on a net level. And by the way, uh, again... No shit, Sherlock. They may just be referring to the growth in data centers and AI compute, but uh, hello. In case anyone has not figured it out yet, there's still roughly half the planet living in or close to poverty. We're looking at a period where we're going to see a massive increase in overall use of fossil fuels and CO2 emissions for at least a couple more decades as we transition to sustainable energy generation, storage and supply. Things are trending in the right direction, but you've got to account for the billions of people currently lifting themselves out of poverty. You think people in third world are running around going, oh my god, oh, I better make sure I drive an electric vehicle so everyone knows I'm a good person to give a fuck about the environment. No, they're still in survival mode. So it's going to take time. Garen fucking teed. CO2 emissions globally are going to increase. They're going to surge over the next couple of decades before they then begin to plummet. It's inevitable. 
As investors continue to associate electrical energy usage, grid efficacy and CO2 emissions with high growth and high profit companies in the tech sector, how would this change consumer, investor and regulatory perceptions about the auto industry's role in climate change? Now this is an interesting question to ponder because, again, Exhibit 1. US data center power usage may be equivalent to the power used by 150 million electric cars by 2030. This is a great way of contextualizing this. 150 million! The entire US vehicle fleet, currently 280 million. So give or take about half, albeit electric. And this is just US data center power usage. Does this put things in perspective? Holy shit, dude. Now again, this US data center power usage, the massive increase we're going to see, is in addition to existing use, existing needs. It's new, extra. I sure would like to be in the business of producing huge batteries for storing energy and have the software capable of moving energy around. Might be quite an opportunity. And exhibit two, for the number nerds, extrapolating US data center power demand from 337 terawatt hours in 2027, a 10% Compound annual growth rate would imply just shy of 450 terawatt hours by 2030. And keep in mind, they may be massively underestimating these numbers. If you nerds want to pause and read every number, feel free. The long and short of it, inevitably, not just the US, but globally, we're going to see a surge in electricity demand, a surge in electricity usage. And I mean, I don't think we have enough electricity generation at this point in time, not even close to account for this surge in demand. As I said, if there's any companies out there producing batteries, including grid scale batteries, I don't know, maybe it's called a big fuck off gigantic mega pack or something along those lines. What a great name for a product. In addition to also producing, let's say, smaller batteries for people to use in their homes and you happen to have brilliant engineers, including software engineers, who could strategically link a number of these home battery packs into virtual power plants to provide energy as needed and those opting in to even be paid for participating, I mean, imagine that, a money printer that you buy at home. You've got a battery, backup energy in case there's a blackout, plus you can print money for you while you sleep. If there was such a company out there producing those products and having the software capabilities, they'd be sitting on a fucking gigantic opportunity and would also be likely to see extreme growth and extreme profitability in their energy storage business over the coming decade. Unfortunately, no such companies exist, but if anyone knows any, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks. You know what would be even crazier than discovering such a company that was in an incredible position to benefit enormously from the absolute surge in global energy needs? Again, we're just talking about data centers being the equivalent of fuck tons of electric vehicles. <laughs> That's just the data centers for training just in the US. You know what would be even crazier though than finding a company that was going to benefit enormously from that opportunity? Hear me out. Imagine a company that was so vertically integrated. Ready? That not only were they going to benefit from the huge surge in AI driven demand for energy, not just training but also the physical manifestations, the vehicles on roads, the human on robots, but also, wait for it, ready? Imagine that company also was in a dominant, unassailable position in terms of electric vehicles. Wait for it, ready? And also, you know where this is going, don't you? was going to carve out a huge slice of the humanoid robot opportunity. Can you imagine? that? that just that would be so ridiculous. No one would believe it. You know, you'd be looking at that going, shit, man, that could be a 30 plus trillion dollar company in the future. Um, of course, this is all just hypothetical and fantasy, right? Because... No company fitting that description exists, obviously. I'm just saying, wouldn't that be insane? Just imagine. Like a totally closed loop. Energy generation, storage, supply, feeding their own AI products. It'd just be too crazy to believe. So yeah. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer has been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. 
pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more? Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more? Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens. You won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they're asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed. I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.